there viewers and welcome back to the self made auto channel we're outside in the 2015 chevrolet cruise and we got a note uh, this is a drop off a tow in and he writes dear eric 2015 black cruise our daughter's car we've had it back to simmons rockwell so that's our local chevrolet dealer a few times for a loud cooling fan he said it is normal today 10 26 car overheated she shut off the AC and went one more mile to such and such's house. Said it got two bars below the H, in quotes, on the temperature gauge. Oil appears fine. I put about three quarters of a gallon of antifreeze in the reservoir and drove it here three miles. It never overheated. Could you please check it out? Check it over. Maybe a stuck thermostat or something. It may be under warranty. I had a 2012 Chevrolet Cruze do the same thing, and the parts were covered. Good luck. Love always customer how they're at me so here we are we're inside the chevrolet cruise uh we've got the key she's a push button start i haven't done anything to it yet however uh, we can probably do some stuff based off from uh experience you guys probably know if you've been on our channel uh for any amount of time it wasn't too long ago i think we did a chevrolet cruise around the same year uh customer complaint was a loud fan uh, same thing this guy complained about at the dealership and we found that the fan did not work on uh, I think it was the lower speeds only the high speed portion of it worked and it didn't kick on until it was you know scalding hot so I think let me just turn the key on here make sure it's okay there must be no accessory just on or whatever um, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get the scan tool going here I'll throw it up on your screen and we're gonna go through, whoa fella, turn that off. We'll get connected here. We'll let it find the vehicle information, assuming I've got the key on all the way. Let's see, Let's see if it can connect to our device, and it did, 15 crews. Uh, so we'll go there, let's blow this up. Let's keep our eyes on the road and our feet on the ground. I don't know if that really applies there. We'll see first and foremost if it set any codes. I don't remember if that other one had cooling fan codes in it. I don't think it did because it was like a little standalone uh, system. So we'll go right in the engine controller here. Uh, start stop with KL9. I don't know. I don't feel like looking. Uh, we'll just say not equipped. And it is an automatic gearbox, right? Yep. And we'll see if it has any codes. No DTC stored, so that's good. Let's back back up here. What I think we'll do before we do anything, let's just see if the fans work, because this was one of his complaints. So we'll do cooling fan one. Conditions not met. Power mode ignition on. It should be on. It's, I don't know how in the thunder I push it one time and it's off. Maybe if I do a push hold. No. Hmm. Must be got to start. It must have just no on position. That's weird. All right, well, let me turn the heater off here. Of course, we're not going to be able to hear. Hmm. How in the thunder do you turn the key on? Well, just accessory and off is all it has. Maybe push hold. Maybe I should read the owner's manual. <laughs> I don't know. Now well, let's fire it up. I guess we can always go out under the hood. We'll do one, two, and three. Because if I remember right, that was high speed. Conditions not met. Engine speed. Engine is running. <laughs> yeah, ding dong. How do you turn the key on? And... All right, I'm going to have to figure that out first, folks. Amateur hour at SMA. The owner's manual conveniently lays on the seat, lied on the seat, and uh, blah, 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 ignition position, keyless access. Uh, tells us here we can do all kinds of stuff, and then there is a service mode, and they write, this power mode is available for service and diagnostics, and to verify proper operation of the malfunction indicator lamp as may be required for emissions inspection purposes. With the engine off, the vehicle off, 
and the brake pedal not applied, press and holding the button for more than five seconds will place the vehicle in service only mode. Their instrument and audio systems will operate as they do in the on run, but the vehicle will be, not be able to be driven. <laughs> well, obviously, the engine will not start in service only mode. Press the button again to turn the key off. Bada bing, bada boom. I just wasn't holding it long enough. Okay. Let's, uh, let me make sure things are happening down here how they should be. And they are. Whoops. Now we're going to do the push hold. Oops. Try this again. Let's get her in service mode. I think it says it's going to light up green. Boom. There we go. Yeehaw. Back to our regularly scheduled program here. Cooling fan relay one. We have to listen very closely. I don't hear it. I did hear a relay click under the hood, but if I remember right, this fan is semi-quiet until it hits full beans. We'll do two and three. We'll have to go out and verify this. I heard some clicky under the hood, but I don't hear anything running. Okay. Then we'll go back to one, two, and three. Because if you guys remember in that previous video I did... There was a uh, big uh, resistor pack on that cooling fan. Here's one, two, and three. There she is, full steam. I can hear it out there. All right, so that is probably his complaint on the cooling fan. Why it overheated is yet to be determined. Uh, let's, just for grins and giggles, let's pop out here. We will go back to two and three. I will take and turn it on. So that is commanded on currently. As you can see, we're gonna pop in the hood. I'm gonna have a looky see if the fan's spinning. Yeah, I'm back. No fan spinach, uh, and the fan sounds pretty squeaky. So I'm gonna turn that back off. Uh, I gotta go in and give Jason a hand for a minute. And then we'll come back out and continue on. Put the antifreeze in your wire looks kind of light. So it is full. And I don't know if she got it hot enough to, to boil over. Because I do see evidence, you know, of what looks like staining back there and I don't know where that jug blows out when it does overflow I think perhaps before we even start it and drive it we probably should pressurize it while it's still cold so why don't we do that 78 585 Astro super pressurizer kit you get to play musical caps as you look for the right cap. It's always the last one you grab is one that fits, or so it seems. We're gonna see if we can nab this one on the first go round. I should label it and or read the directions that tell you clearly which one goes where. Now that one. I think it's that one. Like I said, it's always the last one. That is not the right one because we're just blowing right out the back. Son of a ho ho. Number 10. Hey, we got it. 20. And we wait. She's holding steady. Let's start the 
canteen belt is wet. Oh yeah. I'm gonna get a mirror, have a look, see at this water pump. Serpentine belt's pretty soaked. I don't see any of the sling marks up on the hood. But it's pretty wet. We're at 19.5. I don't know if I can see the bottom of that pump. Kind of. Any wetness on it. I did do a thermostat on one of these the other day. It's pissing right out of the uh, thermostat housing here. This one does not appear to be doing so at the moment. Of course, it could. We could thermal cycle it here. Get it. Get it toasty. Let me just wiggle this a little. Of course, got 20 pounds of pressure on it. I hate wiggling too much. We'll get her hot. See what happens. But something got this belt all slopped up. There's another hose connection over here. Oh, and that one's wet. That goes back to the heater core. But I don't know. That's directly above the belt, also. So I don't know if that one is wet because, you know, swing off from the belt. But you know, that's got some gobbly gook under it. Slimy stuff. And that could be just slinging from the belt to the hose. That's interesting. What else is over here? It can leak just a thermostat, water pump. The hose, but from what I can see at the bottom of that pump, it appears dry. It's very interesting, unless it's you know pissing out the front seal or something that we can't see. Water pump gasket looks okay. All right. What I can see of the radiator, it looks pretty good. Well, let's depressurize it, heat it up. Let's see, we're still at 19.5, so that's where she settled at. Like I say, usually cars, if they leak, they leak cold, not hot. So I wanted to check it first. So I'll let that down. Now that we know it's cap number 10. We won't ever remember that in the future. We'll play musical caps. The O-ring's a little snug on that thing. And here we go. Some time has passed. Perhaps as you can see it is now 3.30 in the afternoon. <laughs> That's how my days go, folks. Jason asked me to come cut off one stud for him early this morning, and the next thing you know, we got both manifolds off and all the broken bolts drilled out and whatnot. Uh, so we're gonna take it for a shake. Uh, up on the screen, I've got coolant temp, as you can see up here, uh, desired, and then of course our fan command. And I was just looking through the AC disengage history. And I see it's been disengaged because of vehicle launch acceleration, wide open throttle. <laughs> eh, sometimes your cars tell on you, people. That's okay. She might have been smashing down the throttle, pulling out into traffic, or passing somebody. Either way. I don't think there's any other data pits we have to look at. We have desired engine coolant temp of 221. She wants to run her nice and toasty. And then, of course, we have our fan commands and whatnot. So we'll take her for a rip like this. Let me uh, 
move the scan tool here. Of course, it doesn't move on your screen, which is kind of a nice feature. Huh? Uh, let me double check that the uh, screen recording software is on before I make a hoo-hoo out of myself. And it's blinking, so it means it is. All right, let's find the D. Ooh, she's got a lot of scrunchy things here. Put the uh, TDS up there in the dash so it don't fall down. Now it's sticking on the floor because it's going to fall down. It's inevitable. All right, let's go roll some coal. I got to just say, your man is hotter and hot today. 68 degrees, folks. Toasty, toasty for the end of October. We've had it like this, and then in two weeks we're plowing snow, so you, you know, you never know. I'm curious to know if this young lady was parked somewhere, you know, and it started overheating then, or if she's just cruising down the road. I wouldn't think the fans would really matter cruising down the road. Like I mentioned, we did see some wet goo along the right side of the engine there, so we shall see in a moment. Just about, just about up to temp. And I don't want to get too far from the shop because I forgot my cell phone. And I don't want to drive this thing back boiling over. So we'll wait for the traffic here. Line back this direction. temperature of 221 temperature gauge is not quite to the halfway mark yet it is one peg down below the halfway we're at 223 right there right 225 she's climbing we gotta wait for this big forward turn right behind now just like the police where are we at now two and a quarter we'll start heading back just in case I do like to run these engines, roasty toasty. Oh. As we start driving there, I see it did drop down. So that's good. Temperature gauge on a dash never moves. That's like I say, one peg below half, even at 214. Get up there to 
228 or so or cruising it's almost like the thermostat was hanging a little bit and we'll head back to the shop you can definitely tell when the thermostat event happens there it definitely happens high all right we'll do one more hot lap here because I got up to almost 2.30 before that thermostat opened, it looked like. Yeah, 228 definitely is the opening event. That's when our cold temperature drops rapidly. It must not be too hot because it never commanded the fan on. We'll go back and give it some idle time. I think we'll see that it gets hot. Also inspect for leaks. What's up? Um, the people with the escape are here. Okay. Uh, see ya. Alright folks, we'll pick up on this Uno Momento. Because uh, I gotta go talk to somebody. But now we know something. Wow, I'm dark. <sighs> this car is never gonna get finished. Like ever! What time is it? <laughs> it's 4.20. Time to take a break. Alright, we're gonna fire this up. Everything's back on the screen. The fella has gone. The window is up. Open and close the driver's side window. Must be, it needs to see a rehoming done. Uh, let's see, I've got your old donger up on the screen here. It says we're recording. We're gonna give her the old rev up, tune up, let it warm up. I haven't, yeah, I've yet to look under the hood. We're gonna get engine RPM here. Let's see, yep, there it is. Like that, so you guys can see what RPM we're at. What's up, dog? So, what did you say about the burger? Like, how it? I'm making a video right now, fella. Oh. Right, I'll be in talk to you in a bit. I am. Okay. All right. Go. I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try to get one car done by the end of the day. Both Josh and Jason have all had big jobs going on today. Been helping them and helping customers and. Whatnot. What's up, Mrs. O? What are you doing? No, I've been trying to fix one car all day. Get a little frustrated. And what's the deal? Uh, people. 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 You didn't have people, you didn't have cars. Yeah, I know, but you know. Well, when you get a minute. Tell people want one minute. Jason, four hours, eight hours ago, wanted one minute. He cut one bolt for me. Next thing you know, I'm doing an old deal. Old deal. That's all right. We got stuff done. Uh, the people with the carry van. I called them. Okay. Uh, the guy with the uh, Acadia. I'm calling them. All right. Look. I don't know anything about anything else. 
what else you got? The parts are coming for the Blazer tomorrow. Subaru, I'll look at it tomorrow, but he didn't leave me a license plate. The Nissan, we'll look at it tomorrow. The F-150 will be done tomorrow. I talked to the guy, I talked to that guy with the F-150, and I talked to the guy with the Suburban. We're golden. Great. All right? When you got him in it. I got all the time in the world you need, honey. You want me to shut this off right now? No, it's not that important. Okay. It was pretty important, but not that important. Okay, go answer the phone. I'm not here. Whoever it is, I'm not here. Where are we at? 199. This would have been a lot better to do right after we drove it when it was already scalding hot. But the radiator temperature is cold, so when the thermostat cycles, you know, it gets that cold dose, so we got to get everything hot again. Friggin' serious woman. It's this guy. It's this guy. If you tell him, I'll call him in, yeah, by five o'clock. Okay. All right? Tell him not to worry. So I see the uh, thermostat heater command came on there. We weren't watching that the first time. Of course, that's gonna help open the thermostat. I see our radiator is starting to warm up there. So maybe you've made the observation that it has commanded the cooling fan on. And at this point, the cooling fan doesn't work. So it's commanding it on a low speed, excuse me, uh, which, you know, obviously isn't working. So our coolant temp is climbing still because the fan is junk. I assume at some point one, two and three are going to turn on because we have high speed and then we're going to watch it drop like a rock. I'm guessing. Probably could have looked back at our old video to see at what temperature the high speed kicks on. Imagine 225, 230. So now it's commanded on the medium speed. However, the medium speed does not work. I'll be just a minute. I've got that upper intake apart. Oh, okay. Should I be taking out the fuel spider before nope. I clean anything? Nope, no, leave that spider right in. You start touching them, they'll all break. Okay. So, yeah, if we can avoid breaking them, that'd be great. Sure. For those of you wondering, the temperature gauge is still one peg before half towards the cold side. Uh, we still have no high speed command on. There's 230. I don't know why the dealer couldn't fix their high speed fan complaint. I can't be the only one in the world that ran across that. But maybe they should watch some YouTube. Maybe it just goes right to boiling over. What's up? This guy is old. Call I, you I, I know, I, I promise him I will call him. Yeah. Now you're telling me that you're yeah. gonna call him? Yeah, yeah, tell him, tell him, just apologize for me, tell him. There we go, now we're on okay. high speed cooling fan. Tell him I'm sorry, I will call him, super busy. Uh, high speed cooling fan, we should watch. I can hear the fan out there just ripping under the hood. We should watch this drop very quickly. Of course, you can see our radiator temperature is falling very quickly now. Yep, and it just shut off, so. Um, but it still is commanding on at a medium speed. So the fans broke, we know that. Uh, we know the car, it does not appear to be overheating now because it is full of coolant. So therefore begs the question, where did the coolant go? Now maybe that it's hot, we can go out under the hood and see. Everything else seems to work as designed minus the fan, which should be on low right now, which isn't because it's broke. Okay, yeehaw. Okay, got my light. Oh, I see some water, and I see some steam, and I see some wetness down there. Oh, baby. 
we got a wet one. Now we can get the old mirror. Hey, mirror. That's like that drunk guy. Turns into mirror guy. Hey, mirror. <laughs> oh, you mirror. Ah, she got me all fogged up. She's breathing heavy. Oh yeah. It is coming death from above. Appears to be around the water pump. Perhaps the water pump passed it. Definitely it's not that hose as we initially had looked at. I'd show you guys, but it's way too hard to hold the camera and do this. Um, Cause I can barely see myself. Of course, I'm not looking at myself. I try not to. Okay, there we go. I can see good now. I can see clearly now back to the water pump. Hundred percent. Uh, I would say, if this were my car, I'd be doing the water pump. Uh, I'd also put a thermostat in it. And I don't know if that's results of it having had air in it the first test drive there when it kind of went really high and then, you know, you had that big cycle, big temperature swing. Um, Thermostats are pretty notorious on these. These, the Chevy Sonics, we do you know several of them. Uh, the heaters in them go bad, uh, and also too, you know, the cooling fan is bad, which you know we know that. So, fan, radiator, or I'm sorry, yeah, not the radiator, uh, fan and uh, water pump. Uh, leave the choice up to him on the thermostat. I will encourage him to do so, uh, being that the system's going to be drained. But judging by the note, I don't even think we're going to get this job. So. We'll leave it at that. I'll make the call. Almost forgot your outro, folks, on the Chevrolet Cruze. Uh, the customer had called the local Chevrolet dealer, uh, asked them about the fan again, had it back, like he said in his note, multiple times for the loud fan. Uh, expressed to them that, you know, he took it to an Indy and, you know, here we go, here's, here's your problem. Uh, uh, evidently, they told him that they're going to do the entire job for half price. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, needless to say, I did not get the job on the car. So, oh well, pick it up, moving on, and we'll get to the next one. Why don't you guys move on down there to that comment box, ring that bell after you subscribe, leave a question, comment, criticism, or concern. And just remember, viewers, if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching.